visual of the hardware. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Amy. You might be wondering if you're more of a Birkin girl or a Kelly girl. I've had these two bags for a little while now and I really try to wear them often so that I can do this video. So let's start off with a side-by-side -side visual comparison and then we'll go over more details for the Birkin, more details for the Kelly and then Mod shots and I'll tell you which one I prefer. So Birkin 25 Retourne versus Kelly 25 Cellier. From this view, it looks like the Birkin looks a bit bigger. And from the side profile, the Birkin is also wider. But the height is very similar if you count the handle as well. They both have feet on them and they just look like that. The Kelly weighs 620 grams. That is including the Kelly, the strap, uh, a fin organizer, and also the raincoat. The Birkin 25 in Togo, so they are different materials. I'm just reviewing the ones that I have. This one weighs 668 grams, uh, and that also includes the thin organizer and the raincoat that comes with it. Even though they look kind of similar from the exterior, they're very, very different size on the interior. And the best way for me to show it to you is the organizer that I have inside. You can see the huge difference. It's also because of the different construction and of course the Kelly is still smaller of a bag. And because of this reason and as you can see it kind of like even protrudes in, um, it, it just has less space on the inside. If you compare the same exact bag, so Kelly 25 in a Cellier versus a Hotone, the Hotone will always have way more space. I'm lining up these two felt organizers right i'm lining it up from this end on the bottom it's still a bit shorter than the birkin organizer from a little bit but from the side profile you can tell a huge difference it's a lot smaller of a of a main compartment. You will also see that I have my raincoat inside in their respective bags. So this one came with the Kelly and this one came with the Birkin and even the raincoat has a different size. Which is why I included the weight for um, this and this in the bag. But if you're curious, the Birkin one is about 53 grams and this one is 50 grams. So if you're not carrying yours, then you save yourself about 50 grams. The organizers themselves are even lighter so the birkin one is about 41 grams and the kelly one is about 30 grams clearly because they are different size and these organizers are from samorga i want to thank samorga for sponsoring this part of the video i love and only trust samorga for protecting my bags they are the expert in the industry when it comes to custom size felt organizers because they themselves buy the bags to create these organizers i got this one more recently because I just got my Kelly recently and I just went with this kind of taupe color because both of my bags are black I wanted the inside of my bag to be slightly brighter color so that I can see my things more clearly but they do have different types of felt uh, they have the 1.2 millimeter felt 2 millimeter and 4 millimeter felt I typically go for the 1.2 millimeter for most of my bags um, especially when the bag itself has enough structure as it is even for the Birkin 25 because the Birkin 25 is the smallest of Birkin sizes um, of classic Birkin sizes I'm aware there's a 20 size but that one is so rare even with the Togo leather I still went with the 1.2 millimeter felt because um, not only is it lighter, of course, that really adds to my reasoning for getting the lighter material, but also I just mainly want to protect the inside of my bag. You might have also heard of organizers ruining bags sometimes. That is especially if they are not made uh, with the correct sizing, so if they're not customly made, and also if the material itself is stiff, so stiff that it creates edges and indents and creases on your bag and you definitely don't want that and that is also the other reason why i always i almost always opt for the 1.2 millimeter that's just my preference i was mistaken they even have a three millimeter felt right now so they have four types of uh felt thickness 
and it's made in Korea. Samorga always makes improvements to their designs as well. So I know that when I get a new organizer from them, I'm always getting the best and the latest. In any case, these are the two that I chose. And if you're interested, I will link them down below so that you can have a look. And of course, you can use my coupon Amy20 to save 20% at checkout. Okay. Birkin 25. Mine is in black Togo and rose gold hardware. If you want to watch the whole unboxing, I can link it up here. I'll also link it in the description box. So everything that I mentioned that might be relevant to uh, additional research, I'll just link it below. The measurements are 25 centimeter, 14 centimeter, 19 centimeter height from here to here. And the handle drop is quite small at 6.4 centimeter or about two and a half inch. What I love about the Birkin right off the bat is that it is an open style tote. I find myself reaching for this bag quite often, even though the size 25 is notorious for having such a small handle draw, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people might prefer the size 30, uh, especially if it's an everyday bag or a work bag, because with the little handle drop, uh, very few people can actually put their whole arm through. This one weighs about 1.2 pounds, whereas the Birkin 30 in the same material weighs above two pounds. So the weight itself, the lightweightness of it is also another pro that I love about it because I can't do very heavy bags and especially as an open tote where you can actually stuff quite a lot. So for this size being a smaller size of its uh, kind, um, it really does fit a lot for me. It fits everything that I possibly need. And because this bag does not need to be closed, uh, at least when you're using it, if you prefer to close it when you store it, go ahead um, but apparently you're not supposed to always close all your bags because that does put stress on the leather but anyway you do you that really helps the hardware stay super shiny because i hardly have to touch the hardware the other pro about this is that because there's nothing getting in the way of you getting in the bag including all the decorations that you may wish to put on uh, this little rodeo which i decided to permanently leave on this bag because I like the contrast of the color really never gets in the way and I love that about it it's super whimsical and fun and it really does add a pop of color and especially if I dress in white like I did today to show you the mod shots it really does complement my outfit as well now the cons the main con for sure is that it's a only top handle handbag and for a lot of people they can't just do top handle especially on the daily it's just not as convenient especially if you have small children or you're um, constantly on the go and you can't just always be holding your bag because you effectively lose an arm and yeah it's just not the most convenient for that reason the other con of course being the 25 size is that the the handle drop is very little so i measured the handle drop from the back because as you notice the back panel is higher than the front panel so from the back panel uh the drop is really just about two and a half inch so unless you have very tiny arms uh which i do have um unless you have very small arms most people aren't able to wear all the way to their through the crook of the arm and even if i can in the winters when i'm wearing my bigger coats and all i still can't put it through because my coats are too thick for that and so it really does limit how you can wear this bag for most people it will either be by holding it like this or at most in their wrists just like that of course being an open tote bag uh, your things can fall off i've never had that issue but i'm just saying that um it's not super secure unless you close the flap which of course you have uh, the um you have the option to do so and i would imagine people with the larger size would want to close their bag more often like especially if they have a 35 or a 40 size which they might use for work or for traveling i would imagine that they might close their bag more often but for me it's just pointless to even close the flap ever i just leave it as is i store my bag as is uh, wear and tear i am extremely careful with my very coveted Hermes bags. These are both my holy grail. And so I can't really, I can't really pinpoint any um, 
or extraordinary wear and tear to be honest i mean the hardware does have a scuff here and there because i have all the stickers removed and of course i still do play with the hardware and i do close the bag here and there more during the beginning when i was still in my honeymoon phase and trying to like take pictures and whatnot um but in general i don't touch it and so um even with the hardware uh from afar and with all the reflections you're not really gonna see any wear and tear on the hardware to be honest the most prominent hardware wear and tear is on the bottom because again i also did remove all the stickers um, again you do you but i will just speak from personal experience and also coming from a place of um you know my my personal advice is that you should remove your stickers because uh, especially with rose gold it's so easy to see a little bit of tarnishing my little constant slim actually the one that i got from hawaii it was brand spanking new but i could see on the very bottom like on the bottom of the h it started to turn colors and it was literally brand new it's not defective or anything but rose gold especially but of course all hardware as well uh, rose gold especially is just super sensitive to um, I don't know, humidity and temperature changes. So rose gold will show the, um, the beginning of a tarnishing or oxidation very quickly. So remove all your stickers and uh, wipe them off every time you're done using them and it will stay perfect for a very long time. I don't ever have to worry about mine because that's what I do. And um, yeah, in terms of the scuffs, on the feet it's inevitable because you are putting your bag down every time the visual of the hardware if you were to look at this one individually you would think that maybe it's a gold hardware um, but side by side you can really clearly see that they are very very different and both of them are super stunning I think um, I, I mean I love rose gold jewelry but for bags, I think it just depends on the leather, the texture of the leather as well as the color of the leather. Let's talk about the Kelly. I love, love, love the Kelly. Of course, I love, love, love the Birkin, don't get me wrong. Um, this bag is slightly newer, so I'm still in my honeymoon phase. I think the Kelly is undeniably the prettier handbag, right? Because it just has those straight edges of course i'm talking strictly my own bag which is the silly 25 uh, mine is in epsom black color gold hardware and um, it just has these clean lines on the silly construction it's just the trapezoid classic shape so it, it's a very ladylike bag uh, it also has a flap closure which is you know, it is a novelty to close your bags. Like when I think about my Chanel bags, every time I close them and open them, it's such a novelty almost. Like it's it's an automatic thing that you do, but it's nice. It's nice to be able to enjoy that aspect of your bag. Whereas with the Birkin, with the open top, it's more about convenience. Even with the 25 size, which is still their smaller of the classic sizes, not counting the mini Kelly, the handle drop is still very, very generous. I would say almost everybody should be able to put their whole arm through and their coats and everything because it's so generous the vintage style it does not come with the strap but with the current kelly's you do get the additional detachable strap as well so super quickly with the measurements 25 centimeters 10 centimeters 18 centimeters from here to here the handle drop is eight centimeters and the strap drop from here to here is 46 centimeters so that's about 18 inches so you might be wondering how is 1.5 centimeter or 1.6 centimeters such a huge difference in the handle drop it's also because this handle is a lot wider as you can see it's so much wider here so not only is it a little taller but because it's so much wider than the Birkin you see the difference there it makes a huge difference so while my arm can fit through this um, it, it, this one is just so universal in terms of the whole space that you're able to put your arm through another thing I love about the Kelly 25 is that 
while I was really, really lusting for the Mini Kelly. I mean, I wanted both the Mini Kelly and the Kelly 25. I know eventually I'll get both, but of course you don't get to decide the order sometimes. Um, but even then, I will say the 25 Celier size is a superb um, evening companion, even though it's not a mini. And I have a a thorough review of the Mini Kelly, which I was able to borrow from Lux Du Jour. I will link it up here for you to watch. Um, the Kelly 25 is just still all around. If you could only get one Kelly in your whole life, the Kelly 25 Cellier is probably the, the one to get. One of the main cons is that because this is a flat bag and because it's a Kelly closure, which is so beautiful and iconic, it's a it's a little cumbersome to get in and out. I've gotten used to it, of course, but you know, every time you get in and out of it, it's not as easy as just flipping a, you know how like Chanel bags, you flip the little turn lock and you can just open it. It's not smooth like that. It has a lot of hardware on hardware grinding, especially if you're too quick and not careful. Uh, eventually you will get a lot of scratches. I still have minimal scratches and you can see what I'm saying, right? Like the hardware from the bottom of this turn lock will always scratch the bottom plate on the inside. So you always have to like kind of, you see how I'm using my thumb. I'm using my thumb to like press it down, press the bag down so that the flap can come through. And depending on how full your handbag is, again, because this is a tapered handbag, you can't fit things that are too bulky on top, otherwise you won't be able to close. It may or may not be that easy to close either. So every time you close, you also have to like press it down in order to fit it through this little, this tiny little hole <laughs> opening. So getting in and out is an issue because not only is the closure kind of challenging, but um, the bag being a bit smaller and also narrow and tapered, um, you know, it, it's a little hard to get in and out basically. Um, obviously the other con is that it doesn't fit as much, but that's okay because that's why you have bags of all sizes in your collection. I wouldn't be using this if I needed to go grocery shopping, right? The other con also, I have to mention this. Because the clasps are such robust hardware and it also has this like protruding little knob there, like where you press to open, it does tend to sometime kind of lay on the leather, like on the top leather bag, on the top of here. Um, if it lays there too long, it can indent your bag. I started seeing like a little, like a very little fine indent. I'm not sure if I maybe pressed it too hard one time or I, I don't know. So the word of advice I have for you from personal experience is to always remove your straps for storage, especially. If you're using your bag every single day, the next day, it may be okay, but just be mindful of the hardware not indenting uh, this little portion, this little tab portion of your of your leather. I can maybe infer another con is that because this is a structured handbag, it should be pretty durable, but if you do have any major accidents, like major shocks to it, uh, like if you really drop it hard or if you really punch it or I don't know, have something really hard, scratch it, especially with Epsom leather, um, it's gonna be quite devastating because not only will you potentially lose the shape, like the smooth structured shape, but you can really damage the leather. And that is the same for all leather bags, of course, but because the Birkin Togo has a natural grain leather, in general, full grain leathers are always a bit more durable. Whereas the grain on the Epsom leather is stamped, is, is man-made and so um, it's still very durable but any super intense impact and scratches will definitely affect it more I think. So similar to the Birkin this one also has three main compartments there is one 
slip pocket in the front, one zip pocket in the back, which is also quite hard and narrow to get to, and of course the main compartment. Uh, typically with these quota bags, the interior is made with chevre leather, which is goat skin, and it's very durable. So I wouldn't really worry so much about using this bag, even without an organizer, and that is me speaking very honestly, especially because mine is black anyway. But having it, it's just an extra layer of protection because you can really prevent a lot of the dust and um, spillages and anything like that. Uh, accidents most mostly uh, from happening so that's how it would look like with the organizer inside and yeah it doesn't obstruct uh, it doesn't obstruct any of the other compartments as you can see you still have great access to the zipper compartment and the front compartment there with the kelly you do handle the hardware a little bit more because you're constantly pushing on the plate here um, to close it and to open it. You're constantly maneuvering the top flap to open and close it. So you will get some fingerprints and also the scratches that are inevitable on the turn lock, which is why one trick that I have for you is that I never turn the turn lock. I always leave it in the same position so that if I ever get scratches, it'll always be on the underside or on one side of the turn lock, which you don't even see anyway, um, but at least the top or the part that's facing me will always be nice and clean. Even then, I still urge you to remove your stickers because, um, you know, in Vancouver, we are lucky that our uh, climate control is still very good, but especially if you live in a humid climate or in very extreme weather conditions, keep your hardware free of the stickers because the stickers can melt can fuse with your hardware, trap condensation underneath and create oxidation of the metal. And so, um, yeah, don't rely on the stickers long term. Remove it. Remove it after like a couple weeks of having your bag that I would say. Uh, even the feet, I have all of them removed already. And so if you use your bags carefully and with love that they deserve, they will stay perfect for a long time. And uh, a hairline scratch here and there is really not a big deal. I should mention one more thing. So right now my bags are bare. I don't typically have twillies on my bags. Uh, they're both black anyway. Um, the only things that I will consider putting on them is a little Rodeo charm, which I love doing on the Birkin, but not so much on the Kelly because again, the Kelly is a flat bag. The the rodeo actually does kind of get in the way of you reaching in and out of it. It's not a huge nuisance, if you know what I mean. It's it's still very cute and like um, it, it does add to the bag, of course, but it's really not necessary. Like, I mean, I, I find that because the Kelly is such an elegant style, you see how every time I open it, you have to like... <laughs> personally speaking right like obviously everyone's gonna have their own preferences but personally speaking maybe because it's also the color of mine I don't feel like the Rodeo actually adds to the Kelly if anything it it's a distraction uh, maybe if you just leave it on the back it's actually kind of cute on the back um, but otherwise I yeah I find that it's more of a distraction and like a nuisance to the bag all in all 
Am I more of a Birkin girl or a Kelly girl? What do you think? Take a guess. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I really do love both and this is my honest, honest opinion, which is why I had absolutely no problem getting both of them in black. Not that I could choose anyway, but I could have refused them in black, right? But I absolutely love both of them in black. I appreciate and do value both styles. I think they're so different. Uh, for me, the Kelly is whenever I feel a bit more feminine, especially it really does depend on the outfit. That's how I style myself. I don't just own all these bags for no reason. I really have a specific use for each of them. And some of them will have multi-use, like this one is such a versatile handbag. I will say between this and my Picota, uh, they're kind of the similar vibe. Uh, the Picotin being uh, even more versatile f with the handle, I favor that one sometimes. But when I want like that sleek look but still an open style, I will definitely reach for this one. And of course, with these bags being my holy grail, I want to reach for them often, right? So same with the Kelly, I wouldn't take it to a kids party or anything like that but I'll definitely take it to a brunch with my girlfriends I'll take it to shopping uh, especially with the with the strap it's really really helpful uh, in the winter if it's really really cold outside I will avoid taking uh, the Birkin because I don't want to freeze my hands um, but it doesn't mean that I won't wear it in the winter I still wear it in the winter but just maybe not on like a super rainstormy cold day or snowy day like I'll just I'll choose depending on the outfit, the environment, and where I'm going. I know some of my friends personally have had both of these different colors, but they ended up being more of a Kelly girl or a Birkin girl, and they will contemplate letting go of one of them. So I know everyone's style and preferences are so different, but in my case, I honestly love both so much. So that concludes my comparison of the Kelly versus Birkin. Let me know which one is your favorite or are you more like me? You kind of love both. I honestly love both so equally. I will never be able to part with one of these. Don't forget to check out some Marga as well. I'll have all the items I featured linked down below. Thanks so much for watching. Again, my name is Amy. If you're brand new here, I would love to have you back on my channel. So please do subscribe. I also have exclusive members only live streams. I would love for you to join. Thank you again. Have a great day and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.